I'm single, uh, as you can probably tell. Um, uh, actually, uh, th this is true. The longest relationship I've been in in the past year actually lasted negative time. <laughs> she, she dumped me before we even met. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. I think you know, I've been pretty unlucky with girls, but I think I know what a lot of my problem is. That's that I kind of have a tendency to stare at women. I know it comes off as creepy, but like, just hear me out. Like, I'm not, I'm not actually like I fucking anyone. Like, if anything, <laughs> if anything, I'm I talking to them <laughs> because that's as far as my fantasies go. It's like this is what's actually running through my head when I'm staring at someone. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, you're a nasty girl. But I wonder what you think of this weather we're having. I bet you think it's too cold, you normal person. Ooh, yeah. I just want to ram my phone number into your contact list. <laughs> you all night long. Uh, I bet you're into some kinky stuff, huh? You like Starbucks? <laughs> you like going to Starbucks and talking for an hour over coffee? I can't wait to jam my tongue into one of those apple fritters they sell. <laughs> I'm probably gonna order one while I wait for you. <laughs> I'm gonna call my sister and complain about you standing me up so hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I fantasize about. Girls standing me up at Starbucks. Uh, so uh, there's this Mexican restaurant by my apartment, and I was walking by it the other day. They have a sign out front that says um, what their specials are. The special for the day was uh, tacos, like pork tacos with cilantro. I couldn't figure out what it was saying because they spelled cilantro with an S. And like, if part of your job description is sign maker, like shouldn't part of the requirements for that be that you know how to spell what's going on the sign? <laughs> but. But then I felt stupid because I figured out what was happening a couple days later. Because I went by again, and they had fixed it, kind of? Like, now it was spelled C-I-L-A-N-T-D-R-O. And I was like, oh, of course! Cilantro! They're, they're selling weed there, and that's their way of advertising it. Like, I guess the first way was a little too covert. Uh, but, like, I actually don't do drugs at all. I like, never have. And, like, that's especially weird for me because I go to all these, like, experimental noise performance art shows where I'm literally the only person not on drugs. And I'm like, why do people not talk to me there? And I'm like, oh, because they think I'm a narc. Because I totally give up that vibe, like... Someone will come up to me like, Hey man, you want some tally whackers? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, like, what is that? <laughs> come on, man, you don't know what tally whackers are. Like, no, please tell me, you've piqued my interest now. <laughs> it's drugs, man. <laughs> It'll fuck you up. I'm like, I'm sorry, it's really loud in here. Could you say that a little bit louder and a little bit slower and a little bit closer to my chest? Uh, yeah, because I, I am recording this conversation. <laughs> so, um, like, I have a weird relationship with music. Like, I love music but I only like music that other people hate because I don't want anyone mistaking me for hip. Like, I'm the equivalent of a guy who will only date ugly girls just because he knows they won't cheat on him. <laughs> so like, 
I used to have a radio show in college, and my goal with it was to have as few listeners as possible. Like, if you tune in and you hear a song that you like, too bad. Because every song is the exact opposite of the one that preceded it. Like, here's a typical set for me. Like, maybe start out with like some pavement, like some, something cool you would expect to hear on college radio. Follow that up with like a 12 minute death metal song in, in its entirety. <laughs> Follow that up with my friend's band, uh, which is just him playing the presets on a Casio keyboard. Like not even singing, just presets. Follow that up with the killers. Like recent killers, like not back when they were considered cool. <laughs> Follow that up with a CD that's just a guy scraping a microphone on a box. Like, that actually exists. Like, I wrote that joke and I was like, I wonder if that's on eBay. And it was, and I bought it. <laughs> so, uh, all right, one more joke, uh, actually two more, kind of. Uh, I saw uh, Keenan Thompson at my school, I'm in, in grad school now, he uh, came to give a talk. And someone asked him, the dumbest question that has ever been asked in the history of civilization. Okay, she raises her hand, and like she actually thought this would be a good question to ask to Keenan Thompson. This is verbatim. I was wondering, if you were a fruit, and you had to be mixed with an element of weather, which fruit and element would you be? For instance, I would be apple acid rain. Like, like if, if you ask that kind of question at a college function, like, that should be grounds for expulsion. Because you have just demonstrated that you're literally incapable of rational thought. Like, like I don't know what you got on your SAT, but clearly something happened since then. Like, probably drugs. <laughs> but I felt sorry for him, like, not just because of that, but also because Everyone just wanted to know about Kel, which is really kind of insulting. <laughs> kind of insulting if you think about it. Um, but I'll admit, there was one question that I almost asked him, because I've been wondering this for years. And that is, uh, when Kel is making love to a woman, do you think that just before the moment of climax, he leans in, you close, and whispers in his lover's ear, very softly, Ah, oh, here it goes! <laughs> because uh, that's what I do, and I was just wondering if that, if that was weird or anything. That's my time. I'm John Hardwick. Thanks for coming out. Give it up for Hardwick again. That guy is intense. Uh, I just recently uh, came to terms with I have a really funny voice. I know it sounds weird. Uh, I, I guess it's good in some ways for me. Like, it's funny. I, would, I guess I want people to laugh at me. But uh, I just, like, it's just so weird, like, because I didn't, I didn't know I sound like that until, like, I started getting recorded and stuff. And then uh, it just sucks. Like, I, you, you guys watch, like, a UFC? Yeah. Female UFC? <laughs> No, you don't. <laughs> so the better uh, analogy would be, you guys remember China? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys already know where I'm going with this. <laughs> I have a very not masculine man voice, but I have about as masculine as a woman voice can get. <laughs> like, that is my voice. And like, I, I like it, I guess, you know, I say goofy things and people laugh, but I hate it like in real life when people are laughing when I'm trying to be serious, because my voice just sounds funny. I'm like, can you make me grilled cheese? And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> you did that thing. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, speaking of feminine men, my brother <laughs> recently came out. He was gay, and uh, clap. Yeah, I guess you guys clap for that. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, equal rights and stuff. It's great. And uh, so you know, I try to back him up. Somebody laughed too hard at that. <laughs> <laughs> They're not like us. <laughs> He's gonna whisper to the guy next to him, faggot. Faggot. But uh, so I, I started watching like you know all those 
um, gay rights thing, so I, like, I could do my part. And like one of the biggest like sayings I always hear them say is, uh, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Yeah, you guys heard that, right? <laughs> Which, like, uh, I, if I was, like, in their marketing department, it's a great thing, you know? Like, it says, you know, it's, it's good boy, not boy, boy. Like, yeah, I get all that stuff. But besides that, like, Adam and Steve sound like a delight. <laughs> if anybody's going to make it in this crazy mixed-up times we live in, Adam and Steve, well, I want to hang out with them, go to clubs with them, help them raise their little Asian children. <laughs> I've been to gay clubs. They're awesome. Anybody been to a gay club? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love gay clubs. They're awesome, you know. You get treated like a lady and everything's great. <laughs> everything's great. But, like, the gay part is, like, the great part of a gay club, you know, because you get to feel like a lady and stuff. But the worst part is the older women that are there. Like, what are they looking for? Like, I feel like somebody should tell, like, once you're, like, in a certain age group, that uh, Forever 21 is just a store. <laughs> it has, like, no magical bearing on your appearance. It's not like I go to Old Navy and come back and get free college. <laughs> yeah, good no joke. It's just the country we live in. I love our country. Uh, this is a Chicago crowd, so I'm sure someone here has been robbed in some way, shape, or form. Yes. Knock on wood, no. And I always feel like whenever you get robbed and you come home to your family or whoever, whoever it is that cares about you guys, uh, like the biggest like, comforting thing they say is, like, those are just things. Those are just things. And I feel like it's, that's a luxury that we've acquired living in such a great country. Where everyone's rich. Even the poor people, like, things are just things. Like, if you're super poor, you know, and you're, you get robbed for TV or money, like, you can get, a, you can get any of those things again. I always just wonder, like, I wonder what it's like in poor countries when they get robbed. Like in Africa or parts of Mexico. Uh, <laughs> like, like, do they come home and tell their parents, like, I just got robbed, and their parents, like, look at, look at them and, like, damn it. You <laughs> need to be tougher. Uh, our next comedian, <clears throat> perfect segue. Our next comedian, I also went to her, uh, went with her to Second City. She's hilarious. She's been doing stand-up for a while. Everyone give it up for Christina Lazarga. You just did something. Never mind. 